Hey guys, how's it going? Evan with Underhill Bonsai. And today I'm going to be revisiting this bald cypress that I formerly worked on in a video over a year ago. It was part of our bald cypress as bonsai video series called part one, part two, part three. And this is the very first one I worked on. Something to note, guys, when y'all are trimming, especially whenever you have your branches roughly in the size that you want them, I'm removing branches that are going to be coarse. Coarse means too big for where they are located on the tree. So I'm removing things so that there's tapering in the branches as well as the trunk. And so on a bald cypress especially, I know that this tree is capable of growing very quickly and very fast. And it, the vigor pushes the branches to be uh, bigger in diameter than I would want them to be in a short period of time, especially if I'm not keeping up with it. Um, there are several hundred trees here, so usually I like to go in and cut hard, but then cut back to finer twigging like I've done here in this section. So I'll continue to do that throughout the rest of the tree. A lot of, a lot of people say the rule of thumb is to cut to three to four leaves on your, if you're on the bottom, and then about to two leaves on the top, and that means cutting back to. But on a cypress tree, on bald cypress, you actually can cut anywhere on this branch and it will bud back. As long as there's these little, on this little cut piece here, it's obvious. These little tiny pieces that are like little miniature leaves. There are buds at every single one of those little pieces there. So there's a couple of hundred bud uh, opportunities on these little shoots. So I have a tendency on taller cypresses like this to keep them a little bit longer in length and not, I'm not trying to chase them back and keep them stubby. I only really stub things back really hard if it's like a shohin size, which there's not that many shohin bald cypresses out there. But it's something that I'm currently working on, so don't worry. I have a few of those in the roster. Leaves are getting nice and short on here. So I'm going to show y'all leaf reduction. So for instance there, and then this. I don't know if that's obvious. It's all getting loud. That's a, that's a medium size bald cypress leaf. And then that one is a reduced bald cypress leaf. You can get a tree full of leaves probably about this big and twice this size with bald cypresses. Down here, this is just to clean the branches up so they're more visible. And they can be removed by hand. You don't have to clip every single leaf off the cypress. This, actually, I would consider that to be defoliation on a cypress because it's partial defoliation when you do it like that. A lot, a lot of people will say that you want to fully defoliate your bald cypress this time of year, which is going into August. I would not suggest doing that. Working back here where you can't see. Is like laying on this big one, so cut it off. I don't want branches touching, I don't want branches crossing. We're past the point of putting a bunch of wire on this tree. I want to start practicing more of a cut and grow style on these cypresses. It makes their branches more interesting. Wow, I didn't mean to do that. It makes their branches more interesting. And with a lot of cypress trees, I know people want to cut stuff off that's growing downwards, like this shoot or these leaves. But then I know people who want to make a weeping bald cypress. And part of the reason I don't cut off those hanging shoots and those hanging leaves is because 
they technically weep on their own. So there's no point in wiring the branches straight downwards. That doesn't even, that's not even how bald cypresses actually grow. And I would know because I'm from Southeast Louisiana. <laughs> and this is really cool. I'm gonna remove this leaf, I mean, because I mean, there's thousands on here. But I've mentioned in the past a lot that bald cypresses can grow a leaf. Every leaf can become a new branch. And here's that evidence that I was trying to show you guys. Um, it's not easy to spot, but, but because by the time that it starts growing out, you, these, these little leaves here have already fallen off. And then all those little leaves that fall off and that becomes a new branch, they can become new buds. And that's why bald cypress is such an awesome tree for bonsai. Okay, from this point, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I cannot reach the top of this tree because I am a short person. So I'm going to be standing on a chair, but you're not going to be able to see it because I'm going to raise the camera up a little bit. <laughs> I want that branch. I, want it to, I don't want it to grow that. This is one of the biggest things about cypresses. It's a flat top, right? It shouldn't be this long though. Flat tops should have a narrow silhouette the taller they are. And traditionally in the Von Banting style that I kind of follow here is that I'm not trying to make a, a landing strip on the top of the tree. I'm trying to make a natural flat looking crown. And even from the perspective of standing below this tree's canopy, which this tree is really tall, so anytime it's viewed, it will appear to be very, very tall on a table, on a display table. So, I actually don't trim this flat up here either. I actually have a roundish kind of shaped crown up here so that the optical illusion of the flat top is kind of shown in the light a little bit. I think that's very interesting. Because when we see really tall flat top cypresses, we see them from the perspective of being on the ground. I like that branch. I don't like that one. Or that one. Or that one. That's a really long leaf. When you got a long leaf like that, you cut it in half. Simple as that. On a bald cypress, that is. You can do it on other species too, but it's easier to hide on this species. All this right here, all this density. You can remove the branches that are growing. Well, not branches that are leaves. But on a cypress, every leaf is a branch. Leaf is a branch, basically, or technically. So I usually remove those inside of areas of congestion. There's a lot of congestion in the branches here, so you can see better.
few more cuts. Same as the bottom, where I cut off coarse sections, of course, I'm going to, of course, cut off the coarse stuff. I don't have to make that many slogans. Beautiful top. Coming to its own right here. There's that sweep. Can you see that sweep right there? There's the flat top movement. Sweeps over, and then the branches come off that side. And then I have to make sure there's no pockets. Beautiful tree. So for a very long time now, well, <laughs> a year, for a while now, I have been growing this branch here to be part of the canopy. And now that I'm starting to find that this is becoming what's called a pocket branch. So it's on the inside of this curve of the line of the tree, which was not there before because now the tree has grown and healed to a certain point where there's a little bit more of a bulge and there's a lot more movement than there was here formerly. So this branch grew into being a pocket branch. And so from looking at the tree from far away, just now, whenever I step back, I noticed that the tree is looking a little too symmetrical up in this area here, and I want to remove this branch because it's not doing much for the tree anymore. See, these are cuts that we make that if we sit there and struggle with these decisions, whoop, sorry, little guy. If we sit there and struggle with these decisions that we could have made months ago, years ago, and fixed an issue, a visual, obviously visual issue that the tree's design has, then we should go in and fix those things immediate, immediately. So uh, since we have this close up here, I'll show you guys the original cut paste. The tree is pushed underneath that cut paste. That's the cut paste that I put on there in the video that I shot a year ago. That's the cut paste right there. So these cypresses, when people ask, had a lot of questions about when you, cut the, when you put this cut paste in there, does it matter if it gets on the outside of the cut? The answer is no, because the tree will naturally push the cambium underneath whatever's in its way and attempt to push it out. That's just the, that's the way that they heal. So it makes it easy to take that stuff right off of there. I had a little bit of bark on there, but I'm not worried about it because bald cypresses, in a way, kind of exfoliate and kind of strain, uh, strand, peel their bark off. There's more of that. It's actually kind of fun. It's like when you're a kid in school and you had glue on your hands and you peeled the glue off. If you enjoy doing that as a child, you'll enjoy taking this off of here. Let's see. There's a little bit of it right there. Try to get not try to get the top of my head in the shot. I didn't do it anyway. So. But yeah, that's pretty clean. Get the tag off. I would say that this tree has come a pretty far ways from being out of the ground for three years now. So this is the rule of thumb that I have with a lot of these cypress trees is that I will go in and collect a bald cypress. This one was collected by Nate Murray, so I can't take credit for that, but it is a it was a very beautiful collection. Um, we'll go in and collect the tree, and then I will wait one full year before I do any type of work. So the, the work that I did in that video previously which will be linked in the comments and it will also be linked in the description uh, so you guys can refer back and y'all can see the incredible video quality of that video was kind of foggy looking compared to one year later we got like what 4k setup on a cell phone now it's incredible 
So yeah, if y'all refer back to that, after one year, I was able to go in, carve, wire, set branches, take the wire off. The wire you see on these branches here, that's rewiring. And in fact, it's starting to cut in already. It needs to be removed. I'm gonna remove it um, right now, actually, because it's cut in on that big branch. But uh, but yeah, I was able to do all this work after the tree was collected within that time span. So you need to allow your trees to grow out for at least a year. Two years is better. If you don't know what to do with your bald cypress and it's been growing and it's happy, and you don't know what kind of cuts you're gonna make, you wanna be, you wanna know what you're gonna do before you start making big cuts like I did in that, that previous video. Oh man, that's like seven gauge. All right. Sometimes I just get a little crazy with the wire, especially on bald cypresses, because the bigger the wire, the bigger the move. I always feel like a, I always feel like a caveman when I put wire on this big. Big wire, big move. All right, let me cut this off. Making my cameraman cut up right now. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Please take freeze frame shots of my face. <laughs> Make memes and stuff out of it. <laughs> Cause uh, wiring with the AC off in the in the beginning of August in Louisiana is uh, no joke. It's actually kind of a challenge. There we go. And y'all notice I'm dewiring this tree without cutting the wire. That's very important because if I go in there with my wire snips, you just got a little bit of burnt, a little bit of wire cut in that'll go away. If I go in there with my wire snips and I'm cutting away and I'm nicking up the, the bark as I'm removing the wire, then I could accidentally cut that branch almost off. I've done it a few times. I've known a few people who are working on their bone saw and they'll go to cut the wire off with their really nice wire cutters and they'll cut a branch clean off their tree that they've been developing for a couple of years. That regrow it and start all over again. So it's better just to go in and dewire the tree like this. It's better for the tree and it's better for you because then it'll, re it'll work your hands into becom becoming familiar with bone saw wire more. So I get the question a lot after people have seen the first video of me working on these trees or the first, the first video series, now what? And I've gotten that question a lot. It's kind of funny because it's, I go in and I work on these trees and then the only thing that can heal wounds and grow branches is time. So a lot, a lot of the time that I'll tell people, oh, I saw your video, now what do I do with my bald cypress? If you have been following along if you've worked on your own bald cypress in the past and you've done the wiring you've done the trimming and you've had your tree grow out you should be more or less to this point with your development of your tree um, now keep in mind too this is southeast louisiana this is the native range for bald cypress for the taxonium decidium so this is just the natural growth rate of them here in our zone so if your tree is not this far along or, or it's not as full as this tree is, don't be disappointed. Um, there are things that can be done in that case. So if you guys have any questions about bald cypresses or the care or the styling or anything about them or what, I'm, what I've been doing here with this flat top style that I kind of more refer to as a folk art kind of style with them, 
then you can message me either by private message or you can email me at evan at underhillboneside.com and I will apologize in advance. I do get lots of questions, lots of emails and stuff about various things about bonsai. Um, so if you're patient with me, I'll respond to you. And make sure that you guys like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, and make sure you comment, ask questions. Uh, it looks good for the algorithm of Facebook and, and, uh, and for YouTube and Instagram and all the other good stuff. So questions, questions, questions. And to follow this up, I will bring in the next tree that was part of the video series. I, I still have the, the second tree from part two. I don't have the one from part three. Uh, someone purchased it on, unfortunately, but fortunately. <laughs> so, uh, but I will go through and I will trim that tree as well. And then I will give a bald cypress care guide kind of layout. And for even more detailed care guide information, if you want to hear me and Nate Murray talk about bald cypresses, you can go to our podcast, Bonsai Southeast. You can listen to it on Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast on. And there's plenty of information on collecting bald cypresses and bald cypress care there. But uh, without further ado, this is my flat top bald cypress from uh, the first part, part one of the bald cypress for flat top bald, bald cypress bonsai. And uh, that'll be it until next time.